Good afternoon and welcome back to another ironic introduction to another video. Today I want to talk about the uh, potential for an Act 6 Chapter 4 rewards rebalance uh, as well as the just super super hyped uh, rewards for the Mole Man Expeditions. Those rewards look juicy. As always, if you want to skip the read-alouds, I'll have timestamps in the description below uh, and links to the forum in the description below as well if you rather just read it yourself. That said, um, I'm calling it a rebalance on the Act 6 Chapter 4 rewards. Let me read the forum post and you'll understand why. So Kabam Mike says, Hey all, I wanted to let you know that we are still talking about some changes to rewards and we currently have some plans but have not finalized them yet. Off the bat, I want to point out that the Tier 5 Class Catalyst Crystal and 6 Star Rank Up Gem Crystal are not changing, but we agree that the rewards here now are tailored more for 5 stars and players that are 100% 100%ing Act 6 would probably like to grow their 6 star roster. The first completion, completion will still be geared towards growing slash empowering your 5 star roster, but 100% exploration will be geared towards 6 star champions. Thank you for your patience and your feedback, we'll have more information for you soon. So I call it a rebalance because depending on how Kabam handles this, there are some people who might be disappointed with this shift in rewards, and some people who will be happy about it. It just kind of depends on where you are in the game. Uh, I I assume when they talk about the tier 5 class catalyst, I know a lot of people really wanted a selector crystal on that, uh, and that's just currently not going to happen, and I don't see any problem with that. RNG on the tier 5 class catalyst is super, super reasonable. Um, my question is on the 6 star rank up crystal, because like that doesn't exist in these rewards, so maybe it's supposed to be here and it's not, uh, or maybe it's just a typo and they're talking about the awakening gem crystal, which is probably what they're talking about uh, and they're referring to it more so as a, uh, a rank up and they really just mean to say awakening uh, but honestly we'll just have to wait and see because it all comes down to how Kabam handles this uh, because like depending on how they tweak their rewards this could be super awesome or it could just be kind of another letdown I'm going to choose for right now to just wait and see um, I think my biggest reason for like pointing out rebalance and like emphasizing all this is that like uh if we think oh for the exploration exploration rewards they're going to change it from two five star rank four to rank five gems into like two rank one to rank two six star gems be mindful that from like a flat reward standpoint that is a significant increase in tier five basic and tier two alpha uh and I don't think that that's going to naturally like you know, in a relate. Uh, so I would I would say as far as like a natural exchange, we might see something like uh, maybe, yeah, we get those two gems, but they take away two tier five basics from the general rewards. Uh, so you're getting less versatility in that regard. Uh, so yeah, like I said, really just gotta be a wait and see thing on this. That said, uh, if you just care about the Mole Man Expeditions, let me tell you, there is some huge hype for this, for me at least. There's definitely like a little bit of a down note, but I'll go through the post and I'll stick a timestamp for those of you who want to skip this as well. But good Mole Man to you, Summoner. Mole Man has been sneakily building a series of subterranean tunnels and lairs just below your feet and filling it with treasures. Do you dare to go spelunking into the unknown and traverse Mole Man's expansive tunnels to take the treasures for yourself? Introducing Mole Man Expeditions. Mole Man's lair is vast, and he's left items, crystal shards, and catalyst fragments strewed along the many paths of his domain. This unique side quest will feature four difficulties, medium, heroic, master, and epic, each consisting of four maps, one unlocking each week. The maps will feature multiple branching paths where summoners must choose between at least two opponents of varying difficulty as they travel to the final boss. Caves are small spaces, so you'll only be able to bring in three champions on your team. Be careful, Summoner. You don't want to get caught by Mole Man while you're trying to steal his treasure. Get ready to lead your expedition into the unknown. All along the branching paths of these quests, you'll find catalyst fragments and crystal shards. This quest... This quest costs zero energy and the rewards are split along the paths of the maps. There are some rewards for quest chapter and act completion and exploration, but they do not compare to the rewards that you can find along the many different paths. Speaking of paths, each path consists of three fights and the boss fight. There are multiple rewards along those paths. Quest 1 will have 8 paths, quest 2 will have 12, quest 3 and 4 will both have 16 paths. But what about the rewards? Moment's treasures can be found along the many branching paths of the quest 
quest. Unlike a traditional quest where the best rewards are found in the completion and exploration, you'll find the best rewards on the quest map itself. This way, even if you do not have the time to complete the entire quest, you can target the rewards that you need most. The following chart shows the total possible rewards you can find on the map across all four quests. Remember, one quest unlocks each week. Also, there are also extra rewards in the completion and exploration rewards as well. Uh, time to go under. Quest 1 of Mole Man Expeditions will unlock on March 4th with a new quest releasing every week. Don't get lost in the caverns below. So that said, for those of you who care about the rewards, I do have a timestamp uh, here for, uh, you know, just to skip the read aloud. But the reason I'm not like going through the rewards on the pads and the completions and stuff is that I have a time, uh, an Excel sheet for this. Uh, because whenever like they split up the rewards like this, I, I think it's neat and it's like one way to do it. And they're definitely doing a much better job in giving us like, hey, total rewards. But it's still really tough to gauge how good the rewards are until you've like properly calculated them all up together. Um, so I've actually done that in self. So this is like total rewards if you were to 100% every single difficulty and all the paths. Uh, and just like be mindful that I took up all the paths and it says you have to pick between two fights, which means don't be fooled. Odds are if you take a path and it only has two fights on it, it's gonna be an ambush by Mole Man. Cause like Kabam has already said, it's three fights and then the boss. So you can almost guarantee if there's only two champions on a path, Mole Man is waiting for you. Just kind of a quick tip. Uh, after that, uh, I added up the eight paths, 12 paths, 16 paths, 16 paths, which is, um, you know, a number, multiplied that by four, and that's gonna give you 208 fights per difficulty, just to kind of get you aware of how many fights it is to get an exploration of a difficulty. Gold-wise, it's 190,000. It's not the most amount of gold, but this is a side event, so I think that's fairly reasonable. Energy refill-wise, we're getting the equivalent of 3.357 energy refills. That's just about 100 units or so, which is pretty solid in the form of energy refills, especially granted that this quest is not energy, uh, no energy to do. So that's really, really nice. Uh, after that, we get 0.07 or 7% of a six star crystal. I'm not gonna lie, this feels like a bit of a downgrade. We're, nor we're normally used to seeing like 10% of a six star crystal, but uh, you're gonna see that there's definitely a direct reason for that. And that is because we get 1.64 of a five star crystal. And normally we're lucky to see like 75% of a five star crystal. So if you're telling me I'm losing 3% of a 6-star crystal and I'm getting it in like almost double, if not a little more than what we normally get on the 5-star crystals, dude, that is A-OK -okay with me. Plus, for most people, especially people on like the higher end, this extra 5-star crystal means 6 stones, it means ISO, and guess what? If you dupe a champion, it means 275 6-star shards, which, you know, roughly balances out in addition to the extra stuff you get. So it's easy to like look at it and say, oh, 7% of a 6 star crystal uh, they nerfed us a bit but in reality this actually is a buff overall because I would actually rather see those shards in the 5 star shard version and then rely on duping a 5 star uh, in order to get those shards back just because in the long run it pays off much better so hopefully you guys can uh, adopt my ideology on that as well for 4 stars we're seeing 5.37 4 stars which is actually a pretty good amount you know I definitely rely on those for ISO and there's plenty of 4 stars worth their salt i have here pseudo four star because this is your legendary crystal so it's almost like 6.3 four star crystals but you never know you could win the lottery on that for three stars we're getting almost 15 here 14.775 three star crystals so yeah still a pretty good chunk of iso there as well and i put pseudo three star because again this is one ultimate crystal you could win the lottery there but you know it's probably a three star uh as far as upgrade materials i feel like we are like pulling huge here from Kabam. They just totally upgraded it across the board. Tier 5 basic, we're seeing 13%. I think we normally see like 4,500, which is about 9% on the tier 5 basic. So this definitely is a nice little upgrade to it. Uh, tier 4 basics, we're seeing a whopping 7 tier 4 basic, 7.179 here. So that feels good, especially considering this is the side event. Tier 3 basics, we see a flat 6, tier 2 basic, a flat 12, and tier 1 basic, a flat 
at 11. Uh, as far as tier 4 class catalyst, we're seeing 6.1. I think uh, this is about double what we normally see as far as tier 4 class catalyst go. I think we normally see like somewhere between 2 to 4. So 6.1 feels very, very solid. Tier 3 class, we see 6. Tier 2 class, we see 10. And tier 1 class, we see 11. So overall, those rewards are mighty spicy. And then tier 2 alpha, we're seeing almost two whole tier 2 alpha on the side month event. And that is crazy. I mean, I know we've seen similar tier 2 alpha rewards in the months, just like between objectives and like met special weekly things and uh, just free gifts. But like having it in the side event, this is awesome. I love the fact that we're getting almost tier 2 alpha. It almost well, it, it mostly, but it almost completely overshadows the fact that there are absolutely zero tier one alpha in the side month event. Uh, you know, this would be like if someone made you a hot fudge banana split brownie sundae with whipped cream and didn't put the cherry on top. Uh, it's still an amazing sundae, but it's kind of like, damn, I really wanted that cherry. Uh, but that said, overall, these rewards, I'm, I'm going to say, are phenomenal. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm overjudging it. Maybe I'm overselling it. Tell me if I'm missing something. But I'm pretty hyped. I'm pretty stoked because don't forget, we also got like a boss rush coming our way, the standard monthly event coming our way. Hopefully, this month does not disappoint. I think uh, besides the tier 1 alpha, my only other like word of caution is 208 fights per difficulty is not a small number of fights. So be prepared jump in with your best three-star teams and let's get this done together that said as always i hope you guys enjoy hope you enjoy your night and i'll talk to y'all later peace